Cholera Elimination Plan for Kenya. Next, please. So our process of development of the current national multi-sectoral plan is a lead up to um, the process of the global ro uh, roadmap. Um, our previous map, uh, our previous uh, plan uh, uh, lapsed and um, out of that, we've been able to then um, get technical support and we've been able to develop hotspot mapping. Uh, and we've also been able to get um, some recommendations from the GTFCC independent review panel. And we are now clear with our hotspot analysis. And we have also been able to develop the preliminary uh, uh, plan. Next, please. So uh, in uh, the history of uh, cholera in Kenya is a bit uh, checkered. We've had cholera in Kenya since 1967. So this, I'll be able to show you some uh, history uh, on that. We'll be able to also show you our specific goals for the elimination plan, the coordination mechanism, our hotspot mapping, the SWOT analysis by the pillars, implementation plans, and the monitoring framework for the key indicators we'll have selected, and also the county baseline uh, information. Next. So, uh, cholera in Kenya was first reported in 1971. Uh, since then, we've reported outbreaks almost annually. However, the largest outbreaks was seen in 1997 to 1999, and then between 2007, 2007 to 2010, and then 2015 to 2020. A lot of our outbreaks are associated with the refugee camps, informal settlements. We also have uh, outbreaks that are related with mass gatherings and uh, border uh, uh, regions. So as you can see, our uh, most recent, we have an ongoing outbreak in uh, the refugee camp of Dadaab. So far we have about 16 cases reported. And cholera is one of our priority diseases in Kenya under our IDSR guidelines. Next. So this is just a graphical representation of our cholera cases and the case fatality rate, as you can see. Initially, we, had, we used to have um, uh, very high CFRs. Then we dropped around uh, early 2000. However, there's been a resurgence again in the case fatality rate. Uh, beginning around 2009 and then again the 2012 and 2018. Next. So our country goals towards elimination, we, we've looked at the uh, five years preceding 2020. So that is 2015 to 2019. And our target for uh, elimination is to reduce these uh, incidence rates to uh, five per 100,000 by 2025 and zero per 100,000 by 2030. All right. So in terms of um, our, our coordination mechanism, because we have adopted a multi-sectoral approach in both our previous plan and the current elimination plan, and to, able to be able to galvanize all the relevant sectors and government departments towards this elimination goal, we propose that um, the 
plan be hosted by the office of the president. Uh, we have also said that we the funding shall be closely monitored uh, by a cholera advisor. We shall also oversee the implementation and ensure that targets are met. We still propose that the Ministry of Health remains the Secretariat of the Task Force and oversees the implementation structures. So again, this will mean that we'll need to have a, a wide collaboration between governmental departments, uh, development partners, and all other stakeholders that are keen to uh, drive the cholera agenda. Next slide. So um, we've also been able to conduct hotspot mapping with support from GTFCC, CDC, and uh, we did our hotspot mapping in two steps. So first we analyzed um, the sub-regional uh, risk by looking at the mean annual incidence and the persistence by weeks as recommended by GTFCC. Then we also followed up that to refine the uh, hotspots by overlaying the wash indicators. Arising from that, we see that about 10% of our subnational regions, which we call counties, um, are hotspots. And the population living in these areas is 6 million people. Next, please. So this is just a graphical uh, a map demonstrating our hotspots. Uh, on, the, on the left, looking at my screen, you have the whole of Kenya. On the right, that is Nairobi. So when we look at Kenya, where we say 28 sub-counties are considered hotspots, they are largely around the farthest steep up there is Trukana, which, um, which houses the Kaukuma refugee camp. To the east where you see the dab, again, we have a large refugee camp there. Then we have um, the other hotspots around the southern part of the country. Uh, largely around the urban slums in Nairobi and the surrounding counties. Uh, then we have up there when you see Mandera East, Mandera South, Wajia, those are counties that border uh, Somalia and um, a bit of uh, Ethiopia. When we come to Nairobi, out of 17 administrative uh, regions, about 11 are considered uh, hotspots. The area you see around Mbakasi and the Mbakasi South in the deepest color is a highly populated region within the city. And um, that is an area that would be a, a large candidate for uh, interventions, targeted interventions. Next. So the, our key implementation areas, as we've said, we want to strengthen leadership and coordination of cholera response. Also strengthening surveillance and laboratory services. Um, currently the country is implementing it um, the third edition of IDSR. So we expect that cholera surveillance will also ride on, the, on this. In terms of case management, 
there we hope to be able to strengthen our, our commodities and supply systems particularly in terms of uh, the lab in terms of uh, the case management supplies and in terms of the vaccines. Then for WASH, again, a lot of the counties that are hotspots have challenges with WASH and we hope that we can invest more here. And lastly, or oh, second last, risk communication and community engagement. In Kenya, we have a community strategy uh, a system, and we hope that we can ride on this to be able to drive our cholera elimination in the hotspot areas. And finally, of course, we need to have strong monitoring and evaluation systems to ensure that we are uh, following what we've intended to do. Next slide, please. So what have been some of our challenges? Um, we have uh, had challenges with um, Ebola activities in, initially. Kenya had to send some teams to support uh, Ebola preparedness activities in, the, in West Africa. And then, so it, it works two ways. During that time, of course, we had to split our uh, human resources. But um, that also worked for us when it came to COVID in terms of having built some uh, uh, experience in preparedness and response. However, the current COVID, COVID situation is quite a challenge and has compromised a number of other routine services, including immunization and uh, surveillance. Um, the other aspect is and uh, lack of adequate funding for the implementation of cholera control measures. Um, we also have issues around human resource gaps in some of the sub-regional uh, areas. And this is largely related to turnover of staff. And uh, so we need to bulk this up in terms of capacity building and also uh, recruitment. Then uh, we have some challenges around the wash data. So we uh, need to collect more updated wash uh, indicator data to guide the response activities. Uh, lastly, we also have um, uh, issues around coordination of all the actors that have to work to work in this plan. So in this uh, elimination plan, we, we will prioritize strengthening of the uh, engagement processes, the coordination processes around government, government sectors and all our development partners and even communities. Next slide. So in terms of the lessons learned, again, we are saying the, the higher the coordination point, the more likely that you're going to succeed. Uh, we are also saying that um, if we work uh, properly with our partners, we can actually move the plan faster and be able to start implementing probably by uh, August or September, we should be able to launch our new plan and start implementing the elimination activities. And of course, as we update our wash data, we hope to also refine our hotspots. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So what we already have a preliminary report and we hope to, or oh, you went one slide back. 
So we have a preliminary report that we intend to validate this month. And uh, we also in the process of uh, getting approval for OCV use in the country, the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group is uh, to meet this month to facilitate this. And, in, and we hope to ad adopt and launch the plan by August. So these are areas that we are working with subject matter experts from our partner organizations, from GTFCC to assist us to move the process ahead. Next slide. So finally, just want to thank all our government uh, uh, sectors, our development partners, as you can see there, UNICEF, WHO, CDC, GTFCC, Washington State University, AMREF, Kenya Red Cross, WHO, and all the other partners that we may not have listed here. For, we thank them for the continued support.